Apparently it's easy to lie and look rich on the internet. Just split the rent of an Airbnb mansion with 10 of your closest content creator friends. Rent a Lambo for a couple hours. Book a photo shoot in a private jet sitting in a hangar somewhere that comes with green screens over the windows so you can digitally pretend to fly to any exotic location you want. Or just do the easy thing and Photoshop your income screenshots by adding a few extra zeros to the end. But why would YouTubers do this? Well, to make money, of course. To convince you to buy a crypto token, or a course, or a community membership, or to just send you a big old bag of your hard-earned cash for reasons. Channels like CoffeeZilla and Scott Schaefer do a good job of reporting on scams too. Though this is a lot like whack-a-mole. One goes down, two more pop up. And yes, the most egregious of these are getting charged with fraud and going to jail. But what about the creator fluencers who aren't exactly scamming you and may even have good intentions, but are still giving you sketchy, unrealistic, and maybe even dangerous advice? Oh, no. How can you tell who's worth listening to? And how do you avoid wasting time and money on trying to make a terrible business idea work? I'll help you figure this out in just a minute. But first, here's why almost every business advice YouTuber is lying to you, at least a little bit. The formula for success on YouTube is actually pretty simple and it comes down to just a few key ingredients. First, you need an interesting and attention-grabbing thumbnail in order to get someone to pay attention to you in the first place. Then you need a compelling title that convinces a viewer to click by making a big, bold, and outrageous claim, promise, or payoff that they're going to receive in the video. And then you need to focus on maximizing viewer retention by keeping the pace up which usually means trimming or cutting or editing out anything even remotely slow or overly academic or anything else that could cause the viewer to lose interest for even a second, which means that you don't have time for context and nuance and details and background, all things that would ultimately make the information more digestible, more actionable and more valuable. But this is just marketing 101. Doing your best to give viewers what they want and packaging up a YouTube video, making the advice look and feel as fast, cheap, and easy as possible. Because that's what the people want. And it's why we love the story of the overnight success, the lottery winner, the person who strikes gold. It floods our brains with dopamine and makes us think that we can get lucky too, which helps remove accountability and hard work from the equation. And so, that's the story they sell, the get rich quick one, even though statistically speaking, it pretty much never works. Because the alternative of hard work and consistency and sacrifice, huh? those are a tough sell. Nobody wants to hear that story. And yet it is that story, the get rich slow path that does work and can literally transform your entire life in what can still be considered a relatively short amount of time of say five to seven years. And which funny enough is what most of YouTube's new generation of super successful young millionaires have been saying all along. That success is a game of inches, not miles, and five to seven years is actually a pretty reasonable and realistic time frame in order to achieve goals that most people could only ever dream of. For example, Iman Godzi, just 22 years old, first posted his very first video five years ago. Sebastian Georgiou, who's 23 years old, well, you can see posted his first video on his channel five years ago too. Jordan Welch, just 24 years old, posted his first video five years ago. There's a, there's a trend here I hope you're seeing. Joshua Mayo, 27 years old, has been doing this for around six years now, and this is his fourth YouTube channel. In fact, this is actually my fourth YouTube channel. That's right, I've had three channels that all failed miserably prior to this one. And they've documented what they've been doing every step of the way for five years now. I know because I've been watching them on this journey for five years now. And it's been awesome to watch the change and progression and maturity as they really start to figure this stuff out at a deep fundamental level. The problem occurs though, is when you take a look at these guys and other channels just like this, and you take them at face value. Young guys in their early 20s, millions in the bank, traveling the world, but ignore the deeper truths behind all of their success, like how they've all been doing this for years, how they've spent small fortunes by investing in the skills and the experience and the networks and all of the things that go into building up these empires, and how they continue to reinvest in themselves and in their content and in their teams in order to keep growing and keep the momentum going. Which is why one of the very first things that you need to do in order to take full advantage of all of the amazing information that's present right here on YouTube is learn how to separate the hype from the actual valuable gold nuggets and the things that actually have the power to transform your life and your business, anything else that you want to do. Success in business is a puzzle made up of a bunch of different pieces. There are habits, mindsets, skills, connections, business models, beliefs, timing, trends, economic environments, consumer behavior. I mean, just a whole bunch of stuff that needs to be put in place in order to build and grow a successful business. 
And very rarely are you going to stumble across a one-stop shop that's going to meet all your needs simply because it would be too hard for any one person or any one YouTube channel to be the definitive expert in all things ever. This is why one of the first things you need to do is spend some time sampling, trying out different channels, videos, YouTubers, experts, authors, anyone really. Also, look for experts in your specific niche or whatever area of business you're most interested in. For example, if you want to learn about YouTube marketing, well, you could look at Ed from Film Booth. If you want to learn from the world's best experts on personal development and achievement, check out Tom Bilyeu. If you want solid business practices grounded in going the extra mile, check out Ed Milet. Business optimization and scaling strategies? Check out Alex Hormozzi. And want proven and profitable marketing strategies? Then make sure you're subscribed to this channel right here. The goal here is to try to figure out who you vibe with and who you don't. What ideas are relevant and useful to you, where you are right now, and which ones you may want to save to come back to at a later date. And understanding that the key to getting the maximum amount of value from someone's content isn't by consuming a single video on the latest trick or hack or tactic, but rather by immersing yourself in their content in order to see how their minds work, how they make their decisions, what they value, what they're willing to sacrifice and what they're not willing to sacrifice, how they identify opportunities, how they pick themselves up after failure, and basically just seeing how their minds work so you can start to copy and model after those behaviors and apply them to your life and your goals. And one thing I'm sure you'll find sooner than later is how mindset is a much bigger factor than you might have thought. So I've got a question for you. How can two people who have the same career, the same skill set, live in the same country or province or city or state, and at least from the outside, look pretty much identical in regards to their skills and their experience and essentially where they're at in life, and yet earn dramatically different incomes, often one of them earning double or 10 times, sometimes even 100 times more than their seemingly identical counterpart. Well, it's because one of the biggest secrets to success is not just what you do, but more importantly, how you do it. And things like your beliefs and habits and goals and personal standards all play a major role. All things that we can conveniently bundle up into a single word known as identity. And this identity makes all the difference when it comes to staying a little bit late or going in a little bit early or writing that one extra email, making that one extra sales call or working on your content for one extra hour. So let's talk about that now. James Clear talks about this in his book, Atomic Habits, and what he calls identity-based habits, and looking at them like three layers of an onion. The first layer is the superficial layer that most people start with and focuses only on changing your outcomes. For example, setting a goal or intention to lose weight or make six or seven figures. The second layer is changing your process. This is about developing new habits and systems. In other words, if your goal is to lose weight, then a process could be implementing a new workout routine at the gym. If your goal is to make a million dollars, then your goal could be focused on lead generation or content creation. But it's the third and deepest layer that holds the real power because it revolves around changing your identity. This means changing your beliefs, your attitudes, and how you view yourself, and any assumptions or biases that you may have. The cool thing is that a change made at this level impacts everything else, so this is where you want to focus. And another way of putting this is be, do, have. First, be the kind of person that's required in order to get those kind of results, which means first deciding on the kind of person that you want to be. Then do the things that that kind of person would do, and prove to yourself that you are becoming that kind of person by stacking up small wins along the way. Then the natural and logical conclusion to all of this is that you end up getting the results that this kind of person gets. And while this is a good start, looking at other people and trying to adopt and inherit their beliefs and their views and parts of their identities, not in a creepy way, hey, uh, those are my pants, but in a positive life-changing way, it's also not enough to ensure that you're walking away from each video or piece of content that you consume with practical and actionable and relevant tips and ideas that you're going to be able to apply to your own life or business. Which is why the next thing that you're going to want to apply is something that I call the good advice filter. So here's what that looks like. The good advice filter is something that I use anytime I'm evaluating a new strategy or piece of information or advice. And it goes like this. For advice to be good, it must work for most people most of the time. In other words, the exception does not prove the rule. And you want to build the foundation of whatever you're doing on proven fundamentals that work for most people most of the time. 
The good news is, is that these fundamentals and these principles are often very simple. For example, if you want to make six figures, it usually comes down to selling one thing, a product or service, to one kind of person, something we'd call a customer avatar, using one main channel, which could be phone or email, in person, social media, whatever. If you want to make seven figures, then it usually comes down to doing the same things you did to reach six figures, but doing it consistently and over a long enough period of time. And if you want to take your business from seven figures to eight or eight to nine, then it's time to start adding more systems and operations and marketing channels, and probably focusing on building a team. Another example is if you want to lose weight, the formula is again very simple. Eat less, exercise more. Do this and it works for most people most of the time. Want to learn how to speak another language? The FSI, or Foreign Service Institute, says that it'll take around 480 hours to reach basic fluency in Spanish. So a little more than an hour a day for a year, and again, this works for most people most of the time. But there's still another danger you need to be aware of when taking advice from YouTubers, or anyone for that matter. A little known something called survivorship bias. So let me tell you a story. During World War II, the folks in charge of the military wanted to make their planes tougher and protect the brave bomber crews. You see, the odds of a crew surviving from start to finish of the war were only like 50-50, which isn't really good. The problem was, you can't just add armor to a plane like you do with a tank, otherwise it's too heavy to fly. So the US had to get creative. At first, they looked at the planes that made it back home and noticed that there was a pattern. The bullet holes were mostly around the edges of the wings, the tail, and the center. So they thought, oh, we'll just armor these areas up since these are the ones getting hit. But then a smart statistician named Abraham Weld came along and told them, hang on a second guys, you're only looking at the survivors, but you're missing the bigger picture. See, it turned out the planes that didn't make it back home were shot in the cockpit and the engine, which were the areas that actually needed the armor. So once they learned this, they began adding armor to those key areas, and just like that, the number of planes making it back home increased. The moral of the story is you don't just want to look at the survivors or you might miss the bigger picture. For example, it's easy for a successful YouTuber to say, don't chase money, follow your passion, when they already have money. And it's easy to say that the secret ingredient to success is to just post content consistently when you already have your business model and your offers and your audience completely dialed in. And it's easy to say, just work harder when you already know exactly where you're going and you have a clear path and set of steps and directions that you're going to follow in order to get there. But for most people, most of the time, what's really needed is a little bit of clarity, some focus and a guide on exactly where to start, what to work on first and how to make sure you're doing the right things in the right way, in the right place, for the right people, at the right time. So here are a few tips to hopefully walk you through some of the things that you need to think about and consider anytime you're thinking of launching a new strategy or campaign or offer or business. First off, the single most important thing to remember is that value is the name of the game and you add value by solving problems for other people. There's a Zig Ziglar quote that I absolutely love that goes, you can have everything in life you want if you'll just help other people get what they want. To put this another way, if you wanna make a million dollars, then you need to help one million people solve a $1 problem or one person solve a $1 million problem or any other combination in between those. And the best way to find out what problems you're uniquely qualified to solve, what I call your unique business opportunity, lies at the intersection of three different things, your skills, your interests, and market demand. So let me walk you through a simple exercise to figure those out now, starting with skills. So the first thing to do here is make a list and write down all the things you're good at. These are your skills. They're things that you do for work, have done for work in the past, are things that you feel you do better than most people, and are also probably things that your friends or family ask you questions about. Next, write down a list of your interests and other passions or hobbies that you have. So what do you do for fun? What would you do if money wasn't an issue or concern? What kinds of things did you enjoy doing as a kid? How do you spend your time off, your evenings, your weekends? Then move on to the third and final list, which is market demand. It's here you need to do a little bit of research to see what opportunities are available to you that are currently in demand in the market right now. In other words, what products or services could you offer that other people want? Not just what you think they want, but what they actually want and are willing and probably also currently paying for somewhere else. And if you'd like to see some of my top marketing strategies and tactics to help make your business more successful than ever, then you're definitely gonna wanna check out the video that I've got linked up right here. So make sure to check that out now and I'll see you in there in just a second.